Hello everyone, today I'm going to walk you through how to build a dashboard in Excel with ease using pixels. And let me talk a little bit about the dashboard and what it is. So a data dashboard is an information management tool that visually tracks, analyzes, and displays necessary information allowing users to monitor current state of business or specific processes. And to build this dashboard in Excel, we are going to need the help of Pixel. And Pixel is an Excel add-in that helps us to implement Python code in Excel. This would help us to make some processes easier, such as creating some complex sorting methods that VLOOKUP function in Excel cannot achieve. This is an example of the dashboard which we are going to build today. And for more information about how to download Pixel, you can visit the website with the link below. Okay, so let me have a quick overview of the dashboard that we are going to build today. So right here we have the path to the file that we want to load or visually see in the Excel. And then we have the function which to load that file into Excel. Right here, we also have the function that return us with the descriptive statistics of the data. So now if we want to dig a little bit deeper into the data, then we can have a future function which does so. Here, I just want to select the state where is is Idaho and Delaware with the population greater than 5,000 and military equal to false. And then it returns me with those information down here. And finally, I want to have a pivot table which is going to return me with grouping information. So in here, I wanted to group by state name and county name. And I wanted to return me with the population sum of that group and the mean of the density of that group, which is illustrated here. You can see the densities of county Kent and populations. Okay, so now let's we jump to the technical parts and create a set of functions that do what we have went through. So the first step in building a dashboard is that we want to load the data and return with a pandas data frame. We will use a CSV file, but we could write a function to use any data sources we wanted. So I have the function load CSV file here, which take in the string argument, which called path. And this Python file is not yet interacted with Excel. However, if I use the pixel decorator, then this can be interact with Excel. And then that is called Excel func, the strings, which is taken the string and return in Excel with an object. In this case is a data frame. After that, we can go to the Excel and see the function works, which we are going to call that function we just written called law CSV data. And I have the path to the file here. I'm just going to pass that into this function. Next, I want to build a function which returns us with the descriptive statistics of the data. And here I have the function df describe, which in the Excel func decorator that takes in the data frame in Excel and return us with the data frame where index equal true. So now I can call that function in Excel, which is called df describe. And I'm going to pass this data frame which I have loaded in function low CSV data. And it will return me with the descriptive statistics of the data. The next step is we want to build a function that can filter the data. So the Excel func in this function filtered is taking in the data frame as an argument and the 2D array filter values and return us with the object in Excel. So for the default, we want to declare two variables, which is mask equal to none and mask operation equal to n. Then we are going to go through the loop, which attracts the filter values from with a Boolean operation, columns, row operation, and values. So moving to the iteration, if the Boolean operation is not none, then we are going to declare the mass operation equal to the Boolean operation and then uppercase it. <clears throat> and then if the column is with an empty values, then we are going to skip it and continue the iteration to the next row. Next, we are going to create a if and else if condition to sort out the 
data frame based on the row operations which is here and then we are going to ask if the mass is none which is true in the first iteration and then we can make the row mass equal to the mask for the second iteration this will not pass the code will jump here and say if the mask off is n, then we are going to append the mask and the row mask together with the n condition. And if it is or condition, then we are going to append it with mask and row mask. At the end, we are going to ask if this mask is empty or not. If it's not empty, then we are going to pass this mask into the data frame and then we are going to return the data frame. Now I can call that function in Excel, which is df filter, and then I'm going to pass in this data frame object here and this filter values which returns me with a data frame object. To display this filter data, we're going to create another function called dfhead. This function dfhead takes two arguments, which one is the data frame and an n integer. This n integer will determine how many rows, first rows that we want to display this filter data. Now we can call the dfhead function in Excel and I want to display the top 10 rows of the filter data. So I'm going to call in the function dfhead and then I'm going to pass in the data frame object to it and an integer which is 10 then it's going to display me with the first 10 row of the filter data. The last thing in this project is we want to build a pivot table. The pivot table will inform us with the grouping information as I have shown in the beginning of the video. So I have my function called the pivot table which takes in four arguments. One is the data frame, second is the columns, and the third one is the argument. The last thing is the transpose if we want to transpose the data or not. In this function I use Excel argument and Excel return instead of Excel func, but they operate very similarly. And Excel, the first argument is called df, which takes in the data frames. The second is called columns, which you see here, and it takes in the strings. Furthermore, this columns means that group by, which is by state or by county. The x funs, which take in the argument, which is the dictionary of strings, and the last one is the transpose which takes in the bullet. Excel return will return us with a data frame where index equal true and multiple is equal false. Next, we just in the function we want to remove any empty columns which we use the function filter and with all the information we need we just pass that into pandas pivot table function. After that, if we want to transpose, if the transpose equal true, then we can transpose the data frame and then we return that data frames to Excel. So now we can call that DF pivot table in Excel. I'm gonna call that, and the first thing that we need in the argument is we want to choose a data frame object, which we have the data frame object here in the filter data. And we want to pass in what group that you want to do, which is a column argument. So you're gonna parse this. Next is we want where it going to aggregate by. The, the third argument is we want this data to be aggregate by what condition. And in this case, we want it to aggregate by population with the sum and density by the mean. The last thing is the Boolean argument, which is true or false that we want to pass in. Then it's just going to pass this. As you can see, it returns us with the information that we wanted by the county name and density and population. To be quick check with the transpose, we can change the into fall to see how the data get transposed. And you can see it transpose the data back. That's the end for the video of today. Thank you very much.